Hello YouTube. I thought I'd share another one of my projects. Um, this is a coolant level sensor that operates electronically. There are a couple other uh, YouTube videos out there that show how to do a coolant level sensor. They all involve uh, drilling a hole in your reservoir and installing some sort of float uh, switch. In my case, I couldn't do that because, well, first of all, I didn't really want to drill a hole in my reservoir. But secondly, I have a partition here that is, there's a wall in there that doesn't allow me to, you know, pass anything through to mount. So, um, I looked around for another option and I found this. This is a non-contact water level sensor. And you can get them on Amazon for about 13 bucks. So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it's one of my first electronic projects and uh, I've been having fun doing this. The sensor, well, first of all, let me show you how it works. Um, when the coolant level is high enough, this LED is on because the sensor, which is glued to the tank, is uh, detecting water. But if it were to go low, it no longer is detected and it is now powering an LED indicator light, which I will have on the inside of my car. Um, my car is a Volvo V50, and it doesn't have a, a coolant level sensor in it. Uh, a few weeks ago, I experienced a problem, which was a fairly major coolant leak in my thermostat housing. And I fixed it, and I didn't, you know, lose coolant, but I started thinking about how I could have, and uh, could have experienced major and really costly engine damage. I'll explain here how this works. This is the wire, the lead from the uh, sensor. And it's got a terminal at the end of it, which has four pin receptors. Um, first one is a red, receives a red wire, or in this case, receives a red wire, which is the positive terminal coming from this battery. Um, Second one is the yellow wire, which is the output from the sensor. The third one is uh, the ground connection, the black first black wire. The second black wire, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's another black wire, is connected to a terminal um, that is called the mode terminal. And um, if you ground that out, it will send current only when the sensor is low. Otherwise, it will send it when the sensor is high. So, I grounded it. Um, <clears throat> the next component is a relay. And a relay is a switch that is electronically operated. It receives a positive current through the red wire here, a negative one through the black wire, that's the ground wire, and uh, receives this yellow input from the sensor. And this is a 12 volt relay, a uh, one channel 12 volt relay that has a low and a high, uh, you can set it either to be low or high, in other words, activate when the current is low or when it's high. And I set it on this end, <clears throat> the settings are either normally off or normally on, or in the, the middle one is the common uh, terminal. So I have a lead coming from my 12 volt battery to the common, and then I have a lead going from the commonly uh, off terminal 
over to my indicator light and then runs through that and then to ground. So when the switch is thrown that sends current through that channel my indicator light comes on. So I found with this module I had to move the um, the um, jumper switch. There's a jumper right here and I don't know if you probably can't see but um, it comes in the positive set or in the uh, the high setting and I moved it over to the low setting and it works great um, I also wanted to say about something about the battery and power source um, I chose to use a 9 volt battery because I didn't you know I originally wanted to hook it up to the the 12 volt uh, car battery that power source but I was concerned about voltage the sensor is um, is set up for 5 to 12 volts and the car voltage is somewhat erratic I mean it jumps around it goes up to 14 15 volts at times and I didn't want to burn out my sensor so I thought I better start with a with a uh, nine volt battery now at some point I could switch to 12 volts if I put in a voltage regulator that would control the amount of uh, energy coming from the car battery and is to pass these two wires through the firewall and to set up this indicator light on my dashboard somewhere and uh, you know, connect one of these wire, this wire here, to the fuse box um, on a fused connection to make sure that it's protected, and connect the other end, this end, to a ground on the inside of the car. And so that's where I am now. I will um, be doing that part of it tomorrow, and I'll give you an update to have a complete story on this. Okay, I'll pick it up where I left off here, of the interior of the car. And I got the glove box out of here, which was a little more complicated than I thought it would be. Fortunately, thank goodness for YouTube, somebody else put a good uh, video on how to do that, how to get it out. But in this car, it'll be easy. We've got the fuse box on the passenger side here. It's the fuse panel right there. And uh, get the big, this is the uh, entry of the wires. There's a big rubber grommet that it comes through. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is poke a, a hole through that. Maybe a couple of holes, maybe one for each wire. And I'm going to pass three wires in <clears throat> because I am going to, instead of using that D-cell, that... Um, that 9 volt battery, I am going to run a, a wire through there. I found a, a, a volt regulator that's pretty cheap that, you know, cuts the voltage down to whatever level I want, probably 9 volts. And um, <clears throat> it comes in a nice little package. Um, it'll be a little bit more expensive. It's like about 13 bucks for that, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I won't have to worry about replacing uh, batteries. So, um, let me get going here. Okay, here's um, here are my wires coming in. Um, that grommet, rubber grommet, turned out to be thicker than I thought it would. So. But I did poke a hole through it with... Um, with this big poker here, it's a pick that comes to a point. Anyway, um, I actually ended up having to <clears throat> widen the hole a little bit with a quarter inch drill bit, a drill. But I got three wires through here, so I've got two reds, um, one of which is going to power the coolant sensor, coolant level sensor. <laughs> um, 
And the other one is going to power a uh, uh, <coughs> volt uh, volt regulator that I got. It's a step down, so it's going to step it down from 12 volts down to whatever I said it, probably 9 volts. And it will regulate it so it's a very even current. So, um, and then the blue wire goes is going to go over my LED and power that <coughs> to... Uh, Pick a fuse here. You need to um, find out which one is find like a five amp one that and then find out which pole is carrying the current. So you can see it's they're not active when the ignition's off. We turn the ignition on. Um, we can see that that is putting out current um, on one, and this is the protected part here. So it's got to go through the fuse to get to here. So um, what we want to do is insert a little wire connection, the end of this wire, in here along with the one end of the fuse, and I want to do it to the uh, protected part, so the part that's not getting current at the moment. So, um, I'll do that next, but I can't do it when I'm holding the camera. So, All right, I got my two power supply leads tapped in to the fuses here. This one is going to uh, provide the power for the LED when that comes on, and this I tap this one into my climate control uh, fuse. This one is going to uh, go to the uh, step down voltage regulator that will power my uh, coolant level sensor. <clears throat> and I tap this one into the one that controls the uh, overhead light, and anyway. That's done. Okay, well here is the little step-down voltage regulator that I'm going to use in place of the 9-volt battery that I tried first. And works fine, but I won't, will no longer have to monitor my 9-volt battery or replace it with when I'm using this. I got this unit for about 13 bucks off of Amazon, and it's really pretty nifty. It um, displays it's displaying right now the voltage coming from this car battery and um, pushing this button here will toggle the display so that now it's showing the amount of output voltage which is just about 9 volts 8.99 now originally before I adjusted this thing it was showing the same voltage on the output as on the input and you have to manually set the amount of output voltage by unscrewing this or adjusting it from this little screw here and turning that screw counterclockwise to go down in voltage and you just keep turning it down until you get to the voltage you want so anyway it's putting out a steady 9 volts, which is what I want. <clears throat> now, uh, you recall that I pulled two red wires through the grommet on my firewall. And one of them I have hooked up to the relay, which powers my LED. The other one, the intended use, was to um, attach to this thing and power this. So I'll have that red wire going into this terminal, and then I'll take a ground wire and attach it to the ground inside the engine engine bay and uh, attach that where this yellow wire is, so it'll be grounded. Uh, the takeoff from this will be to um, my little water sensor, and currently I have that water sensor you know, powered by the 9-volt battery. Um, I just found a, a little terminal for a 9-volt battery from an old, uh, took it 
broke one out of an old uh, smoke detector and soldered a few wires to that. Um, so I'm going to reuse that um, rather than you know try to redo all that, those wiring connections under the hood. Um, what I did was I, I took an old 9 volt battery and I peeled the electric the metal cladding off of it and I just took the top the part with the terminals on it and soldered these two wires onto those so I'll be able to just simply plug this in in place of the 9 volt battery that I'm using now so there's the old V50 2005 245,000 miles on the clock uh, it's gonna have a bad time to buy a new car, so I'm hoping to maybe get 300 out of it, but we'll see. Um, I siphoned out enough coolant for the LED indicator to go off, and that's about how much it takes to detect low current. So I'm gonna show you what I did with the indicator here. Well, this is about how much I siphoned out. So not, not very much. That was enough to do it. Um, so here is where I mounted the indicator. Put a little label on it so you know somebody, you know, people who aren't me would know what it means. Um, so I grounded this wire um, by drilling a hole and. Uh, part of the body here that's exposed and uh, attached it with a screw so that's that's grounded now it won't display until the ignition's on so when the ignition's on it lights up anyway that's I'm pleased with it should do the job Thank you. Okay, here's just a final wrap up showing you what it looks like with the ignition key on. This is how I mounted it. I just used some zip ties to uh, tie it to my heater core pipes there. And that's the ground wire where it goes to the relay. Um, so inside that blue box there is my uh, hookup to the sensor and also the relay. And then on top is that step-down voltage regulator, which is right now on the display, it's indicating 9 volts. Um, and then, finally, there's the LED on the monitor indicating that it is has plenty of liquid in it. So, this is probably more information than you need. But I thought I'd try to make it as detailed as possible because, uh, you know, it's, I went through quite a bit of head scratching to get there. Maybe this will uh, save some of you. So I have one less thing to worry about now, running out of coolant. Um, this has been a fun project and, uh, you know, I hope if anybody's interested in doing something similar, I hope this helps. So long.